bind to each other right and this is just a association of two molecules two big molecules they come closer and bind to each other they just bind to each other with a very very specific manner which means if this antigen is binding to this antibody this antibody is really specific for this antigen this antibody will not bind to any other antigen so antigen antibody reaction is very 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 specific and it is similar to the enzyme substrate interaction with the difference that uh, uh, in enzyme substrate interaction the substrate is going to change irreversibly but here neither antibody nor antigen is going to change they will just bind to each other and they are not changing chemically their chemical nature is not going to change mm -hmm. so uh, what happens is, as a result of this antigen antibody interaction in the body this is the basis of our immunity uh, this antigen antibody reaction provides us uh, protection from the organisms from viruses uh this antibody when it bind to the virus the virus become inactive when it binds to the toxin the toxin becomes inactive and when it binds to a surface or uh, on the surface of an infected cell so other methods they can come and kill that cell either complement or uh, uh, antibody dependent cell mediated immunity they can come and kill the cell which is uh which is marked by antibodies right so this is what happens in vivo or inside the body and a great detail of this you are going to study in uh, in uh, the subsequent lecture which is immune response in today's lecture more we will talk about the antigen antibody reaction in vitro which means in glass or in a test tube or in laboratory right antigen antibody reaction in vitro or in laboratory and we use this reaction for various diagnostic tests because when we mix antigen with antibody it gives some kind of observable effect right and that observable effect can tell us that antigen antibody reaction has taken place for example suppose there is a pathogen it enters into the body human body and body in response makes antibody against this pathogen so what we can do uh, for the diagnosis of this infection we can do microscopy we can do virus isolation we can do nucleic acid detection but at the same time we can also detect this antibody and some antigen from this pathogen they all are our method of diagnosis of a disease so we can detect all these five including antigen and antibody and the method by which we detect antigen and antibody is this uh antigen antibody reaction it gives some observable effect because antigen is not visible it is a uh, soluble thing most of the time and antibody is also a solution in the form of a solution and if you know the property of a solution you cannot see the antibody under microscope you cannot uh, uh, mm, filter it the only way to know whether antibody is there or not is to interact it with antigen and it will give some kind of observable effect and by that we can know that antibody is present in a present in a uh, specimen and we can do the opposite also uh, we can have uh, antibody in our lab and if we want to detect an antigen we will add the specimen into the antibody and and we will look for the observable effect is that clear so antigen antibody reaction can be used to detect either antigen or antibody when we want to detect antigen we have antibody in our lab we add the sample we add it to the sample and if it comes positive it means antigen is present in the specimen and when we want to detect antibody we add antigen to the specimen if antibody 
it will be present it will give some kind of reaction so we use antigen antibody reaction to detect presence of either antibody or antigen and it has a very crucial role in the diagnosis of disease and we can also use it for some other purposes like for the detection of antibody in the body for the detection of pathogen in the body for the identification of pathogen identification of pathogen suppose you have recovered a pathogen from body you have either cultured it or you have found it on a smear and if you want to confirm that this particular organism this particular bug is uh, i say is shigella Uh, if you remember uh, if you know shigella is a bacteria which causes dysentery and we want to confirm whether it is shigella or not or if you want to know which species of shigella it is so what we have in our lab in our labs refrigerator we have some antisera multiple antisera antisera means a serum which contains antibody against different different pathogen so we mix that pathogen for example this shigella we will mix with one antisera two antisera third antisera so if it is shigella uh, uh, dysentery or shigella um, flexneri these are the species of shigella so it will only bind or it will only give the reaction agglutination reaction with the uh, related antisera right so by this way we can not only detect the pathogen but we can also identify the pathogen suppose you have a isolated pathogen you can know which pathogen it is if you have present antisera different antisera and we can you also use antigen antibody reaction for the quantification of antibody or antigen and we can also use it for the staging of the disease because if uh, uh, you will know later on that Uh, in initial infection the antibody th that is produced is igm antibody and in later reaction uh, in later infection the antibody which is produced is igg antibody so depending upon which antibody is present in patient serum whether it is igm or igg or both you can know whether it is an acute infection or a chronic infection acute means on the recent infection or a chronic infection or it is a in between stage for example if only igm is present you will say it is a only 5 days old infection or if only uh, igg are antibodies are present you will say it is a 2 months old or 4 months old infection or if both of them are present it can be from uh, from 1 uh, week to 2 uh, or 3 months old infection right so antibody which type of antibody are present in the body can tell you whether it is a recent infection current infection or a past infection or even whether it is a vaccination antibodies are produced in response to the vaccination so what happen when antigen antibody interacts the primary stage is just the interaction of the antigen antibody uh, it follows simple physical uh, or chemistry physical laws of physical physics and chemistry and thermodynamics but because they are no no ordinary compounds they are antigen and an antibody they also give some demonstrable demonstrable events like precipitation agglutination lysis of cells killing of live uh, antigens or neutralization of toxins biological active agents fixation of complement immobilization of motile organism or enhancement of phagocytosis these are the effect of antigen antibody reaction the primary stage is only the interaction of the antigen antibody but what it results in is these secondary stages or the observable or demonstrable events because of the antigen antibody reaction <coughs> in vivo uh, a third tertiary reaction also takes place which means uh, uh, neutralization or tissue damage or allergy like that so some general characteristics of antigen antibody reaction first as i told you it is highly specific the antibody will bind only to that and only to one particular antigen and they have a lock and key arrangement and because of that that arrangement they are highly specific and there is no denaturation uh, because of the binding of antigen and antibody they, their physical nature does not change and 
antibody binds to the surface antigen for example there is a virus the antibody will bind to first it will bind to the surface antigen it will it is not going to bind to the core antigen that is obvious i guess and the entire molecule reacts and combination is formed and reversible because of the affinity and avidity of the antigen antibody reaction what is affinity these are two important terms affinity means the intensity of attraction between antigen and antibody at one particular binding site right binding strength of a single binding site i told you in the previous lecture that there is a binding site on antigen that is called epitope and there is a binding site on antibody that is called paratop so the binding strength of one single paratop and epitop is called affinity and avidity is the strength of bond total binding strength sum of all binding sites right so this is affinity and avidity affinity and avidity avidity denotes how uh, strongly the antigen and antibody are binding another thing uh, you can do is uh, the measurement of antigen and antibody you can do it either by a conventional method which means uh, absolute quantification of antibody present in a specimen uh, this will give you uh, analytical uh, value for example this, this much antibody is present in the serum this much nanogram per ml is present in the this type of measurement we do not do in a diagnostic lab rather we do use a uh, measurement by titration titration what is titration titration means uh, we will dilute this specimen uh, uh, serially 1 is to 10 1 is to 100 1 is to 1000 1 is to 10000 and then when we will look for the antigen antibody reaction with the same quantity of antigen <laughs> so if the antigen antibody reaction is taking place up to this dilution 1 is to 10000 it means uh, the titration of antibody in the serum is 1 is to 10000 because after this uh, the antigen antibody reaction is not taking place right it means the uh, higher is the titer means uh, 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 higher is the quantity of antibody present in the serum it is antibody antibody antigen reaction is taking place even after a higher dilution right so this is called titration this is commonly used in lab to know the how much antibody is present in a given specimen we dilute it we serially dilute it and then we look for the reaction if it reaction is taking place even after multiple dilution it means the antibody titration is high uh these reactions are because they are uh, often done in serum they are called sero serological reaction uh and as i told you uh, some uh, they result into some observable effects they are precipitation agglutination complement fixation neutralization oxonization immunofluorescence radioimmunoassay so we are going to talk about these observable uh, uh effects of the antigen antibody reaction the one is the precipitation when antigen is soluble and antibody is also soluble and when we mix them they result into a insoluble antigen antibody complex both were soluble and when we mix them they resulted into insoluble antigen antibody complex and this insoluble antigen antibody complex will settle down into the test tube and this is called precipitation and this reaction is called precipitation reaction both antigen and antibody were soluble and when you mix them a precipitation happened so this is a very simple type of uh, observable effect of antigen antibody reaction and it is extensively used for the detection of antigen for the detection of antibody or for the identification of antigen all right sometimes uh, this antigen antibody complex is uh, it has become insoluble but it does not settle down 
it remains suspended into the solution and when it remains suspended into the solution we call it a flocculation reaction we do not call it a precipitation reaction although both are insoluble both have become insoluble but it has remained suspended in the solution so we call it flocculation although it is also a type of precipitation reaction but we call it flocculation if it remains suspended the antigen antibody complex if it remains suspended into the solution we call it flocculation reaction right so uh, why does it happen i mean uh, why does it happen why antigen and antibody they are precipitating because uh, they are not like uh, uh, uh other chemicals it is not like you have mixed copper sulfate with sodium hydroxide and the resultant compound is copper hydroxide which is insoluble and precipitation has taken place no uh, because as i told you there is no chemical change happening in antigen antibody reaction so marek in 1934 he gave an hypothesis that uh, when we combine antigen with antibody what is happening is not this that one molecule of antibody is binding with one molecule of antigen instead what is happening is that one molecule of antigen is bound to multiple molecules of antibody and by this they form a lattice a lattice a three dimensional web and this lattice is uh, that which causes precipitation so in order to uh, in order to uh, this to happen uh, antigen must be multivalent antigen must be multivalent and antibody should be at least bivalent and they are bivalent usually because they have at least two antigen binding sites so antigen must be multivalent and antibody must be at least bivalent only then a lattice formation will happen and it will cause precipitation right so it is not happening because of some chemical reaction it is happening because of the lattice formation you should remember this term lattice formation and we call it lattice formation lattice formation right so it must have certain properties one is the antigen must be a uh, multivalent and bivalent or multivalent and there must be a zone of equivalence what does that mean the zone of equivalence zone of equivalence means that antigen antibody reaction takes place only when antibody and antigen they are present in optimum quantity optimum quantity uh, if antibody is more and antigen is less the lattice formation will not occur if uh, uh, antigen is more and antibody is less even then uh, lattice formation will not occur lattice formation will always occur when antigen and antibody are in optimum concentration and why does that happen that happen because of valency for example uh, you are a batch of 250 students and if i ask you to make a human chain human chain hold one uh, your both of your hands with uh, uh, another guy and to for but i give you one condition that every alternate student will be a boy or a girl one boy one girl one boy one girl one boy one girl right so in order to make a longest chain your batch must have 50 50 percent boys and girls if in a 250 uh, batch to in a batch of 250 only uh, 10 girls are there and if i give you a condition that every alternate should be a boy and then a girl then you will you will not form a very long uh, human chain or it, it is uh, the vice versa only 10 boys and 240 girls even then you will not form a very long chain so in order to make a longest chain you must have 50% boys and 50% girls same is happening here uh, here it is uh, they are not forming a chain not a web but a three dimensional lattice and this lattice forms best when there is optimum concentration of antigen and antibody i am using the term anti optimum concentration because it does not necessarily mean one is to one ratio of antigen and antibody it will depend upon what is the valency of uh, antigen and antibody right 
it does not necessarily has to be one is to one ratio so if antigen and antibody are present in optimum concentration this is called zone of equivalence zone of equivalence and if antibody is in excess uh perhaps this diagram is mistaken if antibody is in excess so it will be called prozone phenomena and lattice formation will not occur if antigen is in excess uh this will be cause post zone phenomena post zone phenomena and lattice formation will not occur please do not consider this diagram this is this is just a copy of this zone of equivalence uh, right so uh, we have a zone of equivalence we have a prozone phenomena we have a post zone phenomena we should consider this uh, really really uh, uh, it is really important that antigen antibody reaction takes place at a zone of equivalence where antigen and antibody concentration are optimum optimum because this is the basis of all our further antigen antibody reaction which we are going to discuss <laughs> is there any problem till now so there is a prozone phenomena there is a prozone phenomena an antigen antibody takes place at a optimum concentration right so uh, the types of precipitation and flocculation tests one very simple precipitation uh, test is the ring test what we do we take a tube and we take antibody in the bottom and then we add antigen uh, uh, in the column uh, this is a tube we have taken antibody we have poured antigen in it and at the junction of antigen and antibody there will be a line of precipitation line of precipitation this is at the zone of equivalence where the concentration of both antigen and antibody uh, optimum i mean they will diffuse from here to here antibody will diffuse from here to here they will meet at a point where the concentration is optimum at zone of equivalence they will form a uh precipitate this is the simplest form of antigen antibody reaction a precipitation reaction and because uh, the diffusion is taking place in one dimensional we call it uh, we call it one dimensional diffusion another is slight flocculation test slight flocculation test in which a drop of antigen and antibody is uh, placed in a slide and this slide is rotated and after some time you will see the uh, precipitation reaction precipitation reaction this test is still being used for the diagnosis of syphilis this is called vdrl test we take a glass slide it has got a concave wells in it in one well we can place one sample with antigen then we rotate this slide uh, for 2 3 minutes and we will look for the formation of uh, antigen antibody complex this one is showing that the sample is reactive this is weakly reactive and this is non reactive this is slide flocculation test what is flocculation that is antigen antibody complex is suspended in the liquid uh, another flocculation test this is also used this was uh, in past time used for uh, the diagnosis of syphilis this is tube flocculation test tube flocculation test this is not used nowadays now coming to the immunodiffusion this is a same precipitation reaction but in 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 a place of liquid we are doing the same reaction in a gel in a gel agar gel thickem it is a modification of classic precipitation reaction immunodiffusion is being performed in a soft 1% agar gel and uh, it increases the susceptibility of reaction and you can sometimes use multiple antigen and antibodies advantage is uh, the reaction is visible you can then stain it and you can preserve the photographs and you can use to determine the concentration or purity of the antigen or sometimes identity and cross reactivity of the antigen the simplest form of uh, immunodiffusion test is you have taken the agar and this agar contains antibody whole of the agar contains antibody then you have placed antigen at the top of the agar this antigen will diffuse down and it will meet 
at a optimum concentration with the antibody and there it will form precipitation this is single diffusion in one dimensional because antigen it is the only antigen that is being diffused because antibody is present throughout the gel and antigen is diffusing in a one direction so this one is called single diffusion in one direction direct dimension or odin procedure another modification is you take a uh, gel containing uh, antibody then you take plain agar which does not contain neither antigen nor antibody and we add antigen so both antibody and antigen has to move towards each other at one place they will meet at an optimum concentration and they will form precipitation this one is called double diffusion in one dimension both are moving in one dimension but they both are moving so this the two diffusions are taking place so this is called double diffusion in one dimension another type is single diffusion in two dimension this is a agar containing antibody and we have made a well in it and in that well in that well we have placed antigen and this antigen will diffuse and it will form a ring of precipitation ring of precipitation so antigen is present in the well it will diffuse into the agar and at the uh, optimum concentration it will form a ring it will form a ring and if you have placed some specimen the size of the ring will tell you the concentration of antigen present in the specimen right because if there is more antigen in the well it will diffuse far farther another is double diffusion in two dimension in this uh, we have not mixed antibodies in the agar instead we have made two wells in one well we will place antigen in other well we will place antibody and they will diffuse towards each other at one point they will show a precipitation line this is called double diffusion in two dimension this method uh, you by this method you can use multiple antigen and look which one is reactive against the antibody or <laughs> Uh, this is uh, antibody well these are multiple antigens and they all are giving a line of precipitation by this method you can also know how much the antigen are related to each other for example these two antigen their antigen line is form is fused so they are similar kind of antigen they are not giving a crossing crossing line and these two antigen they are separate from each other chemically different from each other they are giving us uh anti uh, anti gen antibody reaction line so it means these two antigens are not related to each other so the double diffusion in two dimension also tells you that if uh, two antigens are uh, similar to each other or they are different from each other one example of double diffusion is uh, uh, alex gel precipitation test in this there is a agar plate at horizontally we have placed uh, anti uh, antibody or anti toxin and vertically we have placed a bacteria we have cultured a bacteria and we want to know whether this bacteria is producing toxin or not so if this bacteria is producing toxin the toxin will diffuse in horizontal direction and anti toxin will diffuse in vertical direction at one point they will give a precipitation reaction so this bacteria is a toxigenic bacteria it produces a toxin and this bacteria does not produce toxin this test is called alex gel precipitation test or toxigenicity test it is done for diphtheria and by this we know whether this strain of diphtheria is toxin producing or not uh, what will happen if we apply current to the agar we are doing diffusion double diffusion and we also apply current to it so it is called electro immuno diffusion or electro immuno immuno electrophoresis immuno electrophoresis so what we do first we take antigen into a well then we apply current anode and cathode suppose this was a mixture of different antigen so this will uh, become uh, this these different antigen will separate from each other then we place antibody we remove this cathode and anode and we place antibody in a large long well and we look for antigen antibody reaction so different antigen will give a different precipitation lines 
so you had applied current at one point just to separate the antigens and then you have removed the current and then it was same uh, double diffusion another thing is electroimmunodiffusion in which uh, antigen and antibody both move in opposite direction the anti antibody will move in towards the cathode and antigen will move towards the anode anode and otherwise this is simple double diffusion test but the advantage is uh, it takes a really really short time with the help of current this antigen diffusion is faster and in half an hour you can get the result this technique was extensively used in past to detect different antigens for example triptococcal antigen and it is very sensitive very rapid it was used for the detection of hepatitis b surface antigen alpha fetoprotein and meningococcal antigen and cryptococcal antigen but nowadays this is not used one dimensional electroimmunodiffusion when antibody is present in the uh, gel and you have placed different antigen and applied a current you will see a precipitation like in a shape of a rocket a jet like uh, projection projection and this the height of the jet uh, like projection will depend upon the concentration of antigen so this is called one dimensional single electroimmunodiffusion test or a rocket electrophoresis rocket electrophoresis and this is used for the quantitative estimation of the antigen uh, these all were the precipitation reaction another type of antigen antibody reaction is agglutination reaction and in agglutination reaction the antigen is particulate particulate it is not a soluble reaction you should you must remember it the difference between precipitation reaction and agglutination reaction is in precipitation reaction the antigen was soluble in agglutination reaction the antigen is particulate particulate it is insoluble antigen and when antigen antibody reaction takes place this antigen becomes clumped or agglutinated and it becomes visible it gets clumped and becomes visible this is called agglutination reaction or those antibodies are called clumping or agglutinin uh, agglutinin or antigen is called agglutinogen it is similar to precipitation reaction but here the antigen is uh, insoluble antigen in precipitation reaction antigen is soluble uh, antigen so there are different type of agglutination slide agglutination tube agglutination anti globulin test or comb test or passive agglutination test slide agglutination is uh, simply you have taken one bacteria you have suspended uh, you have mixed one bacteria made an emul uh, emulsify one bacteria in uh, normal saline and then one loop full of antibody you add in it and then you look for the clumping here the clumping has taken place here it has not taken place so this one is positive antigen antibody agglutination reaction this one is negative antigen antibody agglutination reaction we use it for the identification of different organ
enzyme immunosorbent assay enzyme 